you know, I got inspired to talk about PragerU the other day. Uh, I say that as though I don't have like 20 videos of me responding. <laughs> responding to them but i got i got inspired because i saw something from dennis prager which just phenomenal stuff here a tremendous twitter ratio uh a clip from some newsmax appearance he had where the whole clip's pretty long but the quote is during the aids crisis can you imagine if gay men and intravenous drug users had been pariahs the way the non-vaccinated are but it would have been inconceivable now how spectacular is that huh can you imagine if during the AIDS crisis, gay men were treated as pariahs, can you even fathom? The, the thing that's really insulting about this is the fact that gay men were fighting for medical care and the anti-vaxxers are fighting against medical care, you know? Vosh, I think I'm retarded. What's a pariah? Like, like a social outcast. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bad thing to be. Dennis lived through this. How the fuck does he not remember this shit? Guys, Dennis lived through it, and he does remember it. He just thought it was funny when the gay people died of AIDS. That's it. Seriously, don't overthink it. He knows he's lying. He's perfectly aware of the fact that he's lying. He, at the time, probably thought, and maybe still does, that uh, uh, AIDS was God's punishment to gay people. In fact, hasn't he in the past said... Yeah, 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 I saw this. This is a quote. Even the natural sciences are increasingly subject to being rendered a means to a progressive end. There was the pseudo threat of heterosexual AIDS in America. Science manipulated in order to destigmatize AIDS as a primarily gay men's disease and increase funding of AIDS research. So he's actually saying the, the idea that uh, AIDS is not a gay person's disease is a, a pseudoscience. Like, it's Dennis Prager, okay? He's not stupid. He just likes gay people dying. Anyway, <clears throat> with all that in mind, now that we're nice and inspired, uh, should we be colorblind from PragerU? I'm hoping this will be a good one. I believe it'll be a good one. There is little that reveals the moral confusion of the left as much as it's labeling the term colorblind racist. Here are just a few examples. The University of California publishes a list of terms and ideas it considers racist. The list includes the term colorblindness. Psychology. I don't think they'll say you're racist for saying the word. I think they're saying the concept is racist. The way this is laid out kind of makes it sound like they treat the term colorblindness like a slur. Like if you say it out loud, they'll call you racist. Yeah, yeah. Psychology Today published an article by a psychology professor titled Colorblind Ideology is a form of racism. True. HuffPost published a piece titled, How Colorblindness is Actually Racist. True. In which the author gives three examples. Hey, quick question, by the way. Do you think uh, Do you think if Dennis Prager did a video uh, on the uh, suffering of Jews during the Holocaust and somebody said, hey, you know, every population's had deaths targeted at them. Uh, why are you making it a Jewish thing? Do, do you think Dennis Prager would go, oh, you're right. That's a totally good idea. I will never talk about the Holocaust again. I will only ever talk about death in some kind of abstract capacity. Examples of statements whites make that are allegedly racist. I am colorblind. Mm -hmm. I see people, not color. <laughs> we are all the same. The Disney company recommends that its white employees atone for their racism by challenging colorblind ideologies and rhetoric such as, I don't see color. Wait, how is that, how is that atoning? I, I like how the, the, um, the right is constantly playing this, like, race-baiting victim card shit, like, they're making white people atone. Well, they're just saying you should try to do this thing. <laughs> did did they use the term atone in their press release? Did, uh, did, 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 uh, Sir Disney? walk up to them and say, you're white. And as a product of your whiteness, you're going to need to do this shit. Atone for your sins. Yeah, Mickey Mouse told me that. Yeah. Literally white. Even the U.S. Army has gotten into the act. It sent an email to personnel saying that the Based. word colorblind is evidence of white supremacy. See, okay. Hold on. Again, the way they're phrasing this makes it sound as though the left is literally 
mad at the word colorblind rather than the concept of colorblindness. That, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, how is this quoted exactly? I doubt it said the term colorblind, right? Like it would be like the idea of colorblindness. I could give dozens of examples of the left's Orwellian definition of colorblind as racist. The left, uh, the left military. Um, so, okay, so here's a question to conservatives, okay? Let's, um, <clears throat> first of all, how the fuck is this Orwellian? <laughs> what, what does that even mean? Second of all, uh, so here's an argument. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to, to hear conservatives answer. If all of these institutions are making this point, what do you think their argument is? Like, what, what point do you think it is they're trying to make? Do you think there's a reason that all these disparate institutions seem to have arrived at the conclusion that colorblindness is kind of racist? Or do you think it's possible that uh, it, it was all just like a coincidence or it's a conspiracy? Maybe, maybe there's a reason, you know? Do you think Dennis Prager is going to engage with the actual reason at any point in this video? Or do you think he's just going to say it's because the left uh, is actually pro-racism if it's racism against white people? So they're trying to make colorblindness sound like a bad thing because they want to be racist against white people. The real reason, of course, why colorblindness is racist is because it obfuscates... Uh, problems that are aligned along racial lines. Uh, when you make yourself colorblind, you make yourself blind to problems aligned with color as well. Uh, much in the same way that imagine if a person was talking about anti-Semitism and you were like, dude, plenty of people have like spray paint on their buildings or like violence against them. Why are we, I don't see religion. I just see like violence. We need to stop violence. And then the response to that is of course, well, Jewish people suffer a wildly disproportionate number of hate crimes in this country. It's a unique problem for Jewish people, and it needs to be addressed in relation to that problem. Likewise, black people with regards to a lot of uh, like criminal justice system issues, or Hispanic people with a lot of issues related to the treatment of immigrants. There are many problems that you can only really fix if you're willing to acknowledge the groups they target. And that goes all the way around, by the way, because I would argue that suicidality, depression, and alienation are issues that affect largely white men. And when people in my chat are like, dude, this happens to everyone, I get mad at them too, because I think it's important to look at these problems in relation to, to that group. And, if, and I feel I consider it invalidating if a person uh, is like, well, dude, everyone experiences depression. It's not just a white guy thing. I know everyone does, but there's clearly an aligned issue here. Yes, a brave statement from Vouch. White men matter too. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, hold the presses. Racist. Why Orwellian? Oh, because becoming colorblind answer. is precisely what people opposed to racism should aspire to. Uh, That's why Martin Luther King's most famous quote. Oh my God, it's the one quote. It's the one quote. This is the guy who said, by the way, that white people had a responsibility to learn more about racism. But again, this one quote, I unironically think, I actually wish that MLK had never given this speech just because it has given so much license to people to completely ignore everything that he's ever said just to misinterpret this one quote. MLK in this quote says he wants to live in a world where people are not judged by the color of their skin. But MLK isn't saying we should ignore all race issues. He's not saying that we should judge people based on the color of our skin. Like, being anti-color blindness just means you're willing to acknowledge how problems affect different racial groups, not that you're judging them because of their race. Even this one quote taken by itself on its own is not anti-color uh, anti blindness. From his most famous speech is... I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. You do not have to be racially colorblind to believe this. Seriously, this one quote does not invalidate the idea that colorblindness is racist. You can believe that we should acknowledge the impact that race has with regards to a lot of sociological problems, how they disproportionately affect different groups, and also not judge people by the color of their skin. The left's position is that Martin Luther King was wrong. But it's the left that's wrong. The colorblind uh, person is the very definition of a non-racist person. Here's one obvious proof. The worst racists 
Defenders of slavery, supporters of Jim Crow laws, the Ku Klux Klan, just to cite American examples, were the least colorblind people. Color is I love that. Uh, just to let you know, dude, colorblindness, it's pretty good. You know who wasn't colorblind? Hitler. Hitler wasn't colorblind. Also, by the way, guys, you'll never guess who also was not colorblind. You're never going to guess it. Chat, 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 abolitionists. Abolitionists, you can go read what they wrote, actually did in fact distinguish uh, uh, issues aligned with race quite often. But keep in mind, at no point in this video has or will Dennis Prager explain why the left is opposed to colorblindness. In reality, of course. Uh, what he's going to say is that the left is in favor of judging people based on their race, as opposed to what they really are, which is in favor of acknowledging how issues can affect different racial groups differently. Is the one thing they and all racists see precisely because they define people by their color, they justified subjugation of blacks. Colorblind means one- But it's not about defining people by their color. Colorblindness means that you refuse to acknowledge race as a sociolo- So here's another, uh, here's another one. The drug war was colorblind, right? The drug war, nothing in the language of the drug war explicitly targets minority groups. But when you talk to officials responsible for its development and implementation, it becomes very clear that the drug war was conceptualized as a way of targeting minority groups. Um, without explicitly acknowledging their race. So a colorblind person would look at the drug war and say, well, there's no racism here. It doesn't explicitly call anything out racially. But a non-colorblind person would have the wisdom, you know, the, the sigma male energy, to look at that disparity and say, hey, the language is colorblind, but the outcome is not. The outcome is disparate, and we have to acknowledge that to fix it. Gerrymandering, same thing. Redlining, nowadays, same thing. A ton of laws in this country disproportionately affect different groups. And conservatives know this! You know how I know it? Because conservatives are constantly bitching that men are discriminated against in academia. That young boys in elementary school are too energetic or they're treated like poorly because uh, they're, they're, they're being punished for their boys will be boys Zoomer energy. So clearly, conservatives are very, very comfortable uh, pointing out disproportionate bias when it suits them, uh, but because the conservative mindset relies on the assumption that no racism exists except racism against white people, they have to pretend to be colorblind. In reality, of course, they're not colorblind. The people who enact colorblind laws are often quite racially biased themselves. Colorblindness is just the dishonest vehicle through which they push uh, uh, racial bias. This is his, this. They have been doing this for literally over a century. They did it back with the poll tax um, in the Jim Crow era. You know, uh, they did it with literacy tests. They did it with the grandfather clause. All of these laws that were very clearly designed to keep black people from voting uh, never mentioned black people. Voter ID laws today are very, very often uh, aligned in and written in ways that will disproportionately target certain groups, but it doesn't say that explicitly. Colorblindness isn't a real ideology. It's a pretense for racial bias. One does not believe a person's color is in any way significant. Isn't that the ideal? Shouldn't we define a person by their heart, mind, personality, and as Martin Luther King said, above all, character? Nobody has argued against this. Nobody. He hasn't even presented an example of a leftist disagreeing with this. Does anyone look into a mirror and see color? No, they don't. They see a human. Well, technically, that's the only thing we really see. Color and tone are the... Never mind. I mean... That's how our eyes evolved, but. Being, when a white person looks into a mirror, does he or she think, look, a white person. When you look at the, uh, the racial makeup of the, um, of the gentlemen's clubs 
and the country clubs that Dennis Prager spends his time at, do you guys see race or do you just think like, oh, wow, it's really bright in here? When a black person looks into a mirror, does he or she think, look, a black person? Of course not. When we look at ourselves, we see John or Jessica or Tamika. So all of these are arguments against straw men. First of all, plenty of people look in the mirror and think about their race, especially non-white people. White people have the privilege of never really being accosted that much for their race. But if you're non-white, uh, I'm pretty sure that like daily experiences make you fairly conscious of the way in which your race affects people's treatment of you. Um, obviously, that varies person by person. Uh, it's not going to be like every time you look at yourself in a mirror, you're going to go black. Uh, but uh, it is it is definitely something that influences your um, you know your self perception. Um, but uh... <laughs> uh, but but anyway anyway, like I said, he's arguing against Strawman here. Or Jose, Jose, we see ourselves, not color. Why isn't that how we would want everyone to see us? The left's insistence that color is important is one of the most racist and anti-human doctrines of our time. What about anti-human doctrines? Acknowledging the effects race have in different... I've already responded to these points. Just keep in mind that Dennis Prager has not even presented the reasoning why left groups believe colorblindness is racist. Does it, I, I really have to ask, if you're a fan of Prager U, does it... Does it seem odd to you that something that's being framed as an educational video never even presents the argument against which they are forming arguments? All they did was provide a bunch of quotes indicating there are groups who think colorblindness is racist. But Dennis Prager hasn't supported the idea that any of these groups think you should be judging people based on your race. He hasn't provided anything like that. You'd think that if there were examples of that, he would be able to provide it, but no. He's just sort of assuming it. The comment section is going to be full of people, uh, <laughs> let's go, Brandon. Dude, just say fuck Joe Biden, come on. The, um, the comment section is going to be full of people, uh, jerking themselves off for totally not caring about race, and, uh, people who say that the left is actually the most racist group of all. I see exactly what color everyone's skin is. I just don't give a shit. What a Chad. It was precisely when America was most racist that people's color was deemed most important. Why would we want to return? But nobody's talking about it being most important for judging a person. Turn to that time. Why is your skin color any more important than your hair color? Is this, is this going to be the whole bit? I was hoping that he would move on to another point. Like, lit no, literally, the whole remaining video is like, uh, yeah, listen, your race isn't important, dude. This, you believe that your race is the most important thing about a person, but I believe it's not. I don't think it's that important at all. I'm not race. Like, it's not even... That your race is there, like, is an example of, like, a left racist? argument? Oh, my God. Didn't it have told us Adam's color? And does God have a color? That there were Christians who defended slavery on racial grounds only proves that there were Christians who distorted the biblical view on race. At the same time, it was Bible-believing Christians who organized the first large-scale effort in world history. Well, considering that, like, everyone in America was Christian at the time, it would make sense that there were groups for and against it on both sides, right? That's... It's, it's, like, it's like that other video we watched where it's like, yeah, white people did slavery, but white people also ended slavery. Well, yeah, white, white people were the only citizens in the country, basically. Yeah, I mean, th that was the... Uh, they were they were pretty much the vast majority of the people there. To abolish slavery. A final thought. Uh huh. Imagine that tomorrow every human being woke up blind. Would the world be more or less racist? What? I'm Dennis Prager. What? Wait, actually blind? Like just blind? Actually, here's my prediction, okay? If everyone in the world woke up blind, obviously we'd be talking about years and years of societal collapse here. We do need to see. Uh, but I feel like after that, the big racism would be against AAVE, you know? Like, there would be people who talk in AAVE, and conservatives would be like, why are you denigrating our language? All we have now is our hearing, and you're ruining English with this. And they'd be like, why are you being racist? And the conservatives would be like, we don't even know what your race is. How can we be racist? Jamal? in this conference in Detroit. 
How can, how can we be racist? I don't know what your race is. All I know is that you're not speaking proper English. How can I, how can I be racist? What? How I haven't reached out and felt your hair. May I reach out and feel your hair? This could be anyone's hair. I've known many white people with curly hair. I, <laughs> that's, oh God. Okay. Do they do that now? Well, I think they do it more, you know? God. God damn it. Alright, this is dumb as shit. Fuck you. Get me out of here. Dennis already did this exact same script in the 90s. It was made by the South Park guys. What is this? For goodness sake, two? Trey Parker, Dennis Prager short? This is the 1996 short film For Goodness Sake 2 directed by Trey Parker. Wait, Dennis Prager was in a short directed by Trey Parker? I might, I might have to put this one in the vault for a little while. This one might have to be in the vault. It's probably also copyrighted. 